It's common in the US, but illegal in Germany? Here are six crazy German laws that you should know about. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. Now, whenever people here in the US find out that I'm German, they usually ask me a bunch of questions. And one thing that I get asked a lot is if Germans are really as obsessed with rules and laws as they're often portrayed. And my answer is usually not every single German loves rules, of course, but Yes, overall following rules is definitely something that is valued a lot in Germany and Germans like to have regulations and laws for almost everything. However, some of those laws can be really surprising and funny and that's why today I'll tell you guys about six crazy German laws. Now, of course, I'm not going to make you read any long, complicated, wordy laws in German in this video, but if you wanted to be able to read and understand those laws, I would recommend learning German on Babbel, which is today's sponsor. Since school has started again and the year is slowly coming to an end, I've been getting more and more messages from you guys asking about my tips on learning a language, which is why I'm very glad to be collaborating with Babbel. Of course, German is one of the coolest languages you can learn, no question, and Babbel was actually founded in Berlin, but you can choose from a total of 14 languages on the app, so if you want to learn Italian or French or Portuguese instead, you can do that. The best thing is that Babbel is not just about vocabulary lessons. You can do topic-related lessons, like where you'll learn what to say at the bakery, which, as you might know, is pretty essential in Germany. Ich möchte ein Brötchen. Very important sentence. Ich möchte ein Brötchen. Was kostet eine Brezel? Eine Brezel kostet 2 Euro. Noch etwas? Nein, danke. But you can also listen to podcasts on Babbel and just have it play while you're cooking or walking your dog. You can play games on the app or take one of their new virtual life classes. I saw a German life class called Über Serien und Filme Sprechen, for example, so talking about series and movies, which is definitely something that will come in handy when talking to Germans in real life. I know that many of you had learning a new language as one of their New Year's resolutions, and you may not have fully started that yet, but I have great news for you because with Babbel you can start speaking a language in just three weeks and you can actually get up to 65% off if you click on the link in the info box below, which means it's less than $5 a month to learn a language. Now, law number one, it's illegal to run out of fuel on the Autobahn. As most of you probably know, the Autobahn is Germany's interstate system. If you want to learn more about it, you can check out these two videos. And when it comes to driving, there are indeed a lot of regulations that you have to follow as a driver in Germany. Like your car has to pass inspections every two years, called TÜV, otherwise you're not allowed to drive on the streets. Um, you also have to have certain equipment, like a first aid kit and warning vests in your car. And in the winter, it's mandatory to have winter tires on your car. And yes, you're also obligated to always have have enough gas in your tank as a driver and if you don't and actually run out of gas on the autobahn you can be fined and might have to pay 25 up to 120 euros since this is considered preventable and in general it's also illegal to stop or park on the autobahn even in the emergency lane i mean unless your vehicle is actually breaking down but even then, you won't see a lot of cars just left there on the side of the autobahn. Whereas in the US, you regularly see broken down vehicles on the side of the interstate that were just basically parked there. And of course, since most places in the US don't use radar traps to enforce speed limits, but have cops pull people over instead, you'll often also see a car that was pulled over and also a cop car behind it in the emergency lane as well. On the German autobahn, that would actually be considered jeopardizing the road safety, especially since on many parts of the Autobahn there is no speed limit, so people are going crazy fast. Fun fact, apparently this also became illegal in a small town here in Ohio earlier this year in Youngstown, which is close to Cleveland, so don't do it there either. Number two, it's not allowed to name your baby Superman. 
Now this one isn't technically a law and you won't get fined for this, but fact is, and this is usually hard to believe for Americans, that in Germany you can't just give your baby any name you want. It'll have to be approved by the local Standesamt, like the civil registration office, and there are rules as to what you can and can't name your kid. I mean, of course there are rules for that, it's Germany. We pretty much have a rule for everything. Now, whether the name you picked for your baby will be approved or not depends on different things, such as whether it's a name that actually exists, whether it'll be a reason for bullying later on in the child's life, and sometimes they also don't accept names that aren't obviously a female or a male name, which this last one is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. Here are just some examples of names that have been rejected before. Waldmeister, Junge, which just means boy, Rosenherz, so Roseheart, Bierstube, so kind of like a beer pub, Satan or Satan in German, McDonald's, Superman, Pain, Gucci, Whiskey, or the last names of politicians like Schröder, which was Germany's chancellor before Merkel, or Lenin. And since I already see all these question marks pop up in your guys' eyes, no, you won't be able to call your kid Hitler either. Even though the first name Adolf is technically allowed. These rules are one of the reasons why you won't find a lot of crazy first names in Germany and also why Germans are often very fascinated by what American celebrities name their kids. Number three, deny the Holocaust. Now, this one doesn't necessarily fit into a list of crazy or funny laws, because I think it's neither of those. However, many people from outside of Germany and outside of Europe aren't aware of this and find it a very interesting law when they first hear about it. It's illegal in Germany to deny the Holocaust. So you can't just say that the crimes of the Holocaust didn't happen. If you do, you can either get fined for it or you can actually get prison time of up to five years. Now, I've read many comments on the internet saying that this indicates that Germany doesn't have freedom of speech. Well, that's not true. We do have freedom of speech, Meinungsfreiheit, as a fundamental right in Germany. However, freedom of speech can be limited by other general laws, by provisions for the protection of young persons, Jugendschutzgesetz, and another person's right to personal honor. Those general laws, which are like the first example of what can limit your freedom of speech, cannot be laws that just discriminate against one specific opinion. They have to be neutral and they have to protect another legal right. In this case, the right that they're protecting is the dignity of the Holocaust victims and their families, which is something that we value very, very highly in Germany, because after World War II, when the federal Republic of Germany was founded, the very first paragraph of our constitution, the Grundgesetz, became human dignity shall be inviolable. To respect and protect it shall be the duty of all state authority. So that's why denying the Holocaust is illegal in Germany, even though we do have freedom of speech and it's also illegal in 16 other countries. Number four, it's forbidden to mow the lawn on Sundays or play piano at midnight. Germans like silence. This is something you'll notice if you're ever in Germany, especially if you come from a louder culture like the American one. Germans tend to speak pretty quietly, especially in public. And we also appreciate having some peace and quiet at home, which is why there are tons of laws and regulations about how much noise you're allowed to make and when. Sundays and public holidays have actually been defined as rest periods, Ruhezeiten, for the whole day, which means that you're not allowed to make loud noises that could disturb others. This includes mowing your lawn or using a drilling machine, for example. So if you were trying to do some renovations at home, not on Sundays. This also applies to nighttime rest periods, which usually start at 8 p.m., and sometimes even to lunch hours. The rules for the lunch hours usually vary, though, depending on where in Germany you live, and some rules will even be made by the house management of your apartment building. The Federal High Court of Justice has even ruled that playing an instrument in rental apartments is only allowed at certain times, from 8 a.m. to noon and from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., and even then you can only practice for a certain amount of time. Piano players only get up to two hours per day and drummers, for example, get 45 minutes in the summer and 90 minutes in the winter. Yes, German laws are very specific. Number five, it's not allowed to keep urns at home. This topic doesn't really come up a lot in conversations in everyday life, 
unfortunately. But the Germans among you may have wondered about this when watching American movies before, because in the US it's pretty common that after a loved one dies, you take the urn home with you. I've definitely seen this in movies and shows before where either it's part of a comedic moment because someone doesn't realize that it's an urn, or of course it's part of a drama. Well, that's something that you won't ever see in Germany because we have a law called Friedhofszwang, cemetery compulsion, that says that any mortal remains have to be buried at a cemetery or alternatively after a cremation, you can have a sea burial in Germany as well. Now, in the past few years, the rules have been lifted a little in different states. In Bremen, for example, it's now allowed to spread ashes on privately owned property, but you're still not allowed to take the urn home with you. In general, there's pretty big differences when it comes to funerals and cemeteries in Germany and the US. I've actually had the topic on my list for a while, so let me know if you'd want me to talk about that more in depth at some point. And number six, you'll be punished for saying du to a cop. Okay, those of you who speak German probably understand this law right away, but for everyone else, du is the German word for you. Now, why would that be a problem if you use that with a cop? Because in German, just like in other languages like French or Spanish, we have a formal and an informal address. So depending on what relationship you have with the person you're talking to, you'll use a different pronoun and also a different grammar structure when you talk to them. Du is the informal pronoun for you, while capital Z is the formal one. The formal one is usually used with people who are significantly older, strangers, people of authority, or just people that you have a professional relationship with. It really depends on the specific situation, but if it's not a child or someone you're close with, you usually don't use the informal address with them until you two allow each other to do so. Now, since police are people of authority and you speak to them in a professional context, you use the formal address with them, Z. And if you don't, and use do with them instead, that can actually be viewed as insulting an official, Beamtenbeleidigung, because it's disrespectful and you may have to pay 600 euros for it. The actual fines are decided on a case-to-case -case basis, but this is one number I found. I also found that showing a cop the finger gets you up to 4,000 euros. Now, technically, insulting an official is just based on the general laws of not insulting others. There's no extra laws just about insulting officials, but I would assume that police enforce this much more than regular people do, so you should definitely be careful here. But also, I'm pretty sure that they would only enforce it if you obviously do it on purpose, and if they can tell that you're a non-native speaker and try to speak German with them and just make an honest mistake, I'm sure it's not a big deal. I have come across a few more very interesting German laws, like the ones about beekeeping, but maybe I'll mention those in the future at some point. For now, what other funny, crazy, or just surprising German laws have you heard of? Share them with me and everyone else in the comments below. And of course, I have been thinking about also making a video about the craziest laws in the US. I'm sure that many of you have heard some examples of that because the US does have some very interesting laws. So if you'd like to see a video about those, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and of course, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss it. As always, you can support my channel through the super thanks button underneath the video by joining my Patreon family or by buying me a drink on buymeacoffee.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. And since the last Oktoberfest weekend is about to start, if Oktoberfest was actually taking place this year, you can find my Oktoberfest collection, including my beer mugs, coasters, bottle openers, and clothing on feliefromgermany.com, and you can still get 10% off if you place your order by Sunday, October 3rd. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!